the very first episode of 2023 of the Camogie Report podcast, to Tiberia Camogie's official uh, podcast. I am delighted to be joined by chairperson of the third level Camogie, Jack Dunphy, uh, to talk about and preview the upcoming uh, Electric Iron third level Camogie Championship, which is happening this weekend. Jack, you're very welcome to the show. Thanks, William, for having us. Jack, first of all, I suppose Electric Ireland coming on board as a sponsor this year, a huge boost uh, for Third Level Camogie. Yeah, massive. Um, we had we had uh, a sponsor about three years ago, um, but they, they just didn't renew then during COVID. Um, and we've been looking for one since. And it was actually, uh, we're not going to take total credit as a CCO committee. The, the Camogie Association sorted it. So they're working in conjunction with the GA now on sponsorships. Uh, and uh, this was all done in the background um, behind behind closed doors and it was communicated to us then uh, a couple of months ago. And yeah, brilliant. We knew there was something coming. And then to hear that it's the same the same uh, sponsors that the, the Hurlan and the, the Fitzgibbon and the Sigerson have is just massive. Like, um, and uh, they because they sponsor the two men's codes, like they, they promise the same kind of service to the Camogie, which is absolutely brilliant. Um, but I suppose, although we let's say we didn't do anything to actually um, contact Electric Island ourselves, um, a big, a massive uh, thanks has to go to the previous committee: um, Jennifer Norris, Michelle Malloy, Katie Redmond, Jackie O'Connor, and Shannon Cavanaugh have been there for the last three, four years. And let's say they put the competitions in a position to get a sponsorship like that. You know, they're not going to uh, a company like that's not going to come on to to a, a, a substandard competition. So it's a, a massive shout out has to go out to them for putting the competitions in the, the position to get the sponsorship in the first place. Yeah, look, third level Camogie is just brilliant. It's fantastic, especially this time of the year, I suppose, when you're waiting for the inter-county scene to kick off and the club scene has finished. But I suppose back in my day, we would have always said it was the closest thing to inter-county Camogie because yeah. obviously we don't have under 21 inter-county Camogie or under 20. And, you know, minor is a big st- step up, but... I suppose that would still be the case, you know, if you're playing cl- or colleges camogie, it really is next step up to to intercounty, isn't it? A hundred percent. Um, certain certain teams in particular, uh, certain colleges in the past have. I, I look back on, let's say, the UL team of uh, twenty. It would have been twenty twenty. At like every single one of them is a senior intercounty player now. Most of the UL team, DCU. Uh, UCC most of them are inter-county senior players Um, if you look at the practice matches that we go and organise for our college teams they're usually against Tipperary, Clare Dublin they're all against county teams because that that is the standard Um, and it's a, it's a great step and so on and let's say for players that aren't playing for their county um, for example we had a player from Louth last year uh, ended up being our top scorer in Division 1 of the league like it's it's a great opportunity for someone like that then to get to play against a Tipperary or a, or a Clare or um, play against that inter that kind of caliber of player as well. So yeah, it's definitely definitely the next best thing after the the county. Yeah, and no doubt a lot of the county managers will be in UCD uh, this coming weekend to view all the, the all the players uh, on. So look, just I suppose give us a bit of a summary of the championship so far, the different uh, divisions, how it's all shaped up, and what we want to see this weekend. Yeah, uh, so we have five divisions now in the CCO. We have the Ashburn Cup, which is Division 1. The Purcell Cup is Division 2. We have the Fader Mar Cup is Division 3. Uh, the Amoelagon Cup is Division 4. And we have a new cup this year, the Division 5. Um, I, th- I think I can say it now by the time this goes out. Um, it's being named the Ashton Murphy Cup after uh, Ashton Murphy, f- who, who passed away sadly last year. Um, so that's going to be announced during the week. And... Yeah, it's um she she attended college in Mary Oi. Mary Oi contacted us um and liaised with the family and Mary Oi donated the cup um let's say with with their uh, with their approval. So that's brilliant. Um that's that's a uh, it's brilliant to have the fifth division first of all and to have uh, such an appropriate uh, name to have on the competition as well is is brilliant. So um the five divisions are all at semi final stage now. So um the Ashburn Cup. We have in semi-final one, it's going to be uh, TU Dublin versus Setchy Waterford, um, formerly WIT, most people know him as. And then the other semi-final is going to be UCC versus either UL or DCU. Um, and they're both next uh, on Saturday, the Saturday 11th in UCD. Um, Purcell Cup then, we have 
Uh, Semi final pairings are, I'll just double check to get it right. Uh, University of Galway versus Setu Carlo, formerly IT Carlo. Um, and then it's going to be Trinity College Dublin against MTU Cork. And again, both on both semi finals on Saturday at the 11th. Um, I believe one will be at two o'clock and one at four o'clock. Then the third division. So the semi both semi finals take place at the weekend too. So this is the Fader Mar Cup. Now, this isn't completely confirmed yet. There's one game to be played on Monday between St. Mary's and um, St. Mary's and Jordan. So I have to play the final match. But at the minute, UCD's second team finished second in their group. So they're through. And um, other ones, sorry, uh, MTU Kerry, uh, formerly Tralee IT, they're through as well to the weekend. Um, and then it's between DCU's third team, uh uh, Ulster, or sorry, St. Mary's College in Belfast and Queen's University in Belfast. So the top three divisions, we do the semi-finals on the Saturday, finals on the Sunday, and for the fourth and fifth division, we'll have the semi-finals early in the week and finals then at the weekend. So semi-final pairings there are uh, UL's third team against Setu Waterford's second team. Uh, we have TU Dublin's second team against University of Galway's second team. And in Division 5, or the Ashton Murphy Cup, it's going to be uh, University of Ulster McGee. So they're based in Derry. They'll be playing Marino in the semi-final. And uh, Queen's University of Belfast, their second team, uh, their first year in the competition, they're going to be um, playing Sligo in the other semi-final. So all at semi-final stage, a lot of a lot of games to be played. And then, sorry, yeah, so the Division 4 and 5 finals are on the Friday night in UCD. Uh, the Division 1, 2 and 3 semi-finals are all on the Saturday and then the finals of Division 1, 2 and 3 are on the Sunday at 12, 2 and 4 p.m. Wow. <laughs> when, you hear, <laughs> when you hear it like that, Jack, some amount of colleges and, you know, third level Camogie seems to be as strong as ever. It is. And I, like the ice, I definitely think there's more room for improvement. Like there's there's colleges there that can enter more teams and whether... Like I, I've experienced both. I've been with the intermediates and I've been with the senior team in UCD. Like they all enjoy it just as much uh, just because you're not playing at the top standard. If you have a team to play with in college, like I went, I went up to a college of 25,000 people. I played on the, I didn't play on the Fitzgibbon team, um, but I had my team to go and socialize with and go to training with, even though it wasn't the top standard, it still meant a lot to me. Yeah. Um, and I think the more, the more we can encourage colleges to enter second, third teams and, and some of the smaller colleges to enter their first team even, um, whether they're bad, good or indifferent, getting them playing is is absolutely massive. So, yeah. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm fair play to you and all your committee. You would want to work going in organising all those matches. Um, yeah. Obviously, we're recording this the, fr the Friday night of the weekend before. So it's literally just... Uh, you're finishing up all the last group games and parents are only putting being put together and kind of putting you on the spot here but we just want to get Sorry. this recorded and uh edited in time for for the weekend but um like how many group games would teams have played before that or so we we play one group game before christmas and then we play two after um it's pretty much every college would prefer it all before christmas or all after but the reason being is some, some colleges do exams before Christmas and some do after Christmas. So the first game is going to be a pain to some of the colleges and the second and third team or the second and third game is going to be a pain to the other colleges. So we, we played just before exams um, the, there before Christmas, uh, but we were back. We played Mary Eye in our second group game while the colleges weren't back yet. So we were getting players back up from holidays and ski trips and ski trips are the the bane of a, mm -hmm. uh, a college manager's life, to be honest. Um, but yeah, they just kind of the logistics of that can be quite awkward. But you know, they, we we manage it anyway, best we and, can. And it's great to see UC, UCD ho hosting the tournament, like a serious amount of matches. So really top class facilities and and pitches needed for for it to host a, a massive third level yeah. tournament like this. Yeah, look, the the facilities up there are unreal. Um, if anyone that's anyone that's visited the college, it's it's like a mini city itself. Um, we have the two we have two grass pitches and an astroturf pitch. So look, hopefully the weather holds up. 
I don't want to jinx it, but nearly every year the Ashburn weekend comes around, uh, there's a storm or something on. Yeah. But uh, hopefully it holds up. Um, the pitches are the pitches are excellent. They they don't they don't get wet. They're minded quite well. Um, and then the facilities are there. We have we have the pool. The, there's the food available. There's um, recovery areas, all that kind of stuff. So, um, look, yeah, it's great to have it. Obviously, look, unfortunately, we didn't make it with our first team, but our our second team will be representing us um at the weekend anyway as well so yeah and look i suppose the the, the ashburn weekend or third level camogie weekend is always really special weekend and i suppose it's unusual that semi-finals and finals are played in the one weekend i think the fitzgibbon and the sigerson have gone away from that haven't they or they definitely did now i was only talking to a lad of training there he's he's on a ryan cup team with tu dublin and they're gone back to they're they're doing the weekend now. He's doing two days okay. down in Waterford this year. I yeah. uh, I'm not sure about the Fitzgibbon and Sigerson, but yeah. it was something that when we seen the other codes doing it, I I was very adamant to keep the weekend. It's it's the most unique experience you'll get as yeah. a, as a camogie player or a, a GA player of any type. Um, and look, it's it's not ideal for player welfare. Like you shouldn't really be playing two matches in two days. But I think if you asked every single player, would they prefer a weekend or three days between the two matches, they're they're going to pick the weekend. Yeah, it's something special, like you said, unique. Yeah. And, you know, you don't have it really in any, any other competition. So, you know, it'd be all for it and then we continue. Yeah. I suppose any uh, big shocks of the championship so far or, or kind of the yeah. favourites of all mid-weekends or... Anything? Yeah, well, uh, look, uh, it, it's... It, it might come as a shock from the outside, but we, we didn't. Uh, we were in the final last year and we missed out on the semi finals this year. Um, just shows the competitiveness of it. Uh, we we bet we we lost to UCC in the first game, uh, beat Mary Eye and then got bet by a very a very strong Setu Waterford team, um, uh, at home as well. So there's there's always shocks in it, and you can never read into the year before. Like, I think one of our players mentioned we only had five starters from last year still playing this year yeah. on the team 10 of them 10 of them have left the college um the biggest the biggest surprise not it's not a surprise to me now but uh the the winners of the personal last year tu dublin they've come up and topped their group um in the ashburn and they are they are very very strong um they have some apps fantastic players uh roshan mccormick from antrim and megan dowdle are the inside forward line and uh, megan dowdle from westmead and they're it's a it's a frightening it's a frightening task for any full back line. Um they've Neve Gannon there, a lot of the Dublin senior team uh panel from last year uh playing with them as well. So it's it's the nature of the competitions and it's the joy of it. It's like it's so unpredictable. Now I know UL won five in a row and, and WIT won five in a row as well, the the previous five, but like it is getting more unpredictable and and different teams can come out with a fog any given year, um, which is brilliant. And is there any, I don't know where I put you on the spot and ask for your predictions or maybe, you know, the bookies' favourites to win the Ashburn and the Purcell All and the Father Mar and the Megan and uh, Right, yeah, okay. I'm, just as long as it doesn't end up in a dressing room wall somewhere. But uh, <laughs> I, look, we, we played, um, our group was uh, ourselves, UCC, uh, Setchy Waterford and Mary Eye. Um, UCC, absolutely trounces uh, i think they scored seven goals um they were just on fire that day they haven't won the ashburn in a very very long time um and the college is very let's say they're pushing hard to to kind of bridge that gap they're getting to semi-finals they're getting to finals and just yeah. not getting over the line they're going to be a massive force to be reckoned with i don't no matter who they end up playing ul or dcu they're going to be they're going to be a big threat um and who would be their key players now? UCC's keeper. Uh, so if if I'll flick over to my spreadsheet here, um, let's say yeah. So the the Molly Lynch in goal we found was was quite a, an asset to them. She's uh, all Ireland long puck champion this year, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, so look, if, if any any Camogie goalie that can poke the ball a hundred yards is that's a massive asset to any team. Um, I I have to give a shout out to Claude Carroll there, full back, um, Waterford centre back, uh, an absolute rock in the defence. Um, I I'd be very impressed with Maeve Murphy. She's I think any team that come up against them, 
if if they have a key player that needs to be marked, Maeve Murphy's going to do a job on him. Um, she's a, uh, obviously Cork senior. Um, there's you could there's any amount from the they're, they're nearly all county players. Emma yeah. Murphy would be uh, Emma Murphy's their captain. Uh, Glen Rovers and Cork. She was Cork senior panel last year. Uh, from Tipperary yourselves, uh, Emer Heffernan's there and uh, Kareen Blair as well. So look, the two the two of them played. I think Emer actually got the first goal against us the night up in UCD. Um, two of them are there. Laura Hayes is as well uh, from Cork, wing back for Cork. So yeah. look, there, there's any amount of them. Uh, someone else I was impressed with that's probably coming up through the ranks uh, was uh, Avril Cashman. Um, I think she I think she might have been. Um, I think she might have been a Cork minor last year. So um, there's, yeah, any amount of, uh, they're, they're, they're a savage team in fairness to them. So yeah. look, we see it in the Fitzgibbon every year though. Like there's there's plenty of teams with county players that, you know, just don't click. But I think what's threatening about Cork is they have clicked um, and they look to be a real force. In saying that, the two teams, either of the teams that are going to end up playing them are going to be absolutely brilliant teams as well completely loaded with uh with inter-county talent um i'll just flick over to our ul panel here um do 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 sorry yeah so, so then is not the villa then the ski kick comes and cream blair cash can yeah. so anyone anyone in tip will be well aware of those two players and, and yeah. just <laughs> recently announced on dennis kelly's panel for this year so two players to look out for there from Tipperary and the ucc team in the semi-final this weekend so yeah you will obviously very strong as well, I'd imagine, Jack. Yeah, again, look, if you if they're not already starting on their intercounty team, they will be in the next four or five years. Uh when we look back on this panel in, in five years' time, we'll be saying that was an outrageous college team. Um we go just looking down through the list. I'll go to the tip players first. Emer Lukeman's there. Uh I seen her playing in the league final against UCC. She is one of the most tenacious cornerbacks I've that well, she's playing cornerback for UL anyway. She was on fire does doesn't give anyone an inch. Um, who we have? Uh, yeah, Casey Hennessy's still there as well. Um, women, yeah. Yeah. So look, obviously a massive threat. The uh, the the main name would be Siobhan McGrath. Um, from Galway, she's uh, I, I believe carrying a knock, but fighting through it. And if if anyone loves their their college team. Uh, I don't think anyone loves him any more than, than Siobhan McGrath does. She's been an absolute stalwart for, for UL the last few years. Uh, Aoife Prendergast, captain of Kilkenny last year. Um, even the other night they played uh, they played Minute the other night and, and Sinead O'Keefe wasn't starting and she's a Kilkenny senior panellist. Um, so that's the kind of strength and depth they have. Uh, I see uh, Annie Fitzgerald then and, and Kate Lynch as well from Galtier, two Waterford senior players. So look, it's you could, you could keep naming it just like just like UCC, you could keep naming them and naming them. They're just yeah. there's strength and depth there. Uh, if I look at the DCU panel, um, give me two seconds, we'll find it here. Uh, yeah, so uh, DCU obviously won the Ashburn last year. They bet us in the final. Um, very deserving winners. They they completely had our number on the day. Um, they uh, they their key player would probably be Kira O'Connor from Wexford. She's oh yeah, in my books, one of the best ten players oh, yeah. in the country, and like. You could you could put a hundred puck outs down on her, and you could have five people marking her. She's still going to catch 80 percent of them. Like she's just she's an absolute machine. Um, so Kira Connor is definitely the key. Um, definitely the key one there. The Ash Gannon centre forward. She was Dublin senior panel last year. Um, yeah, they've look again strength and depth. Uh, I, I I don't have it up here beside and me. Would they so be strong? Names, they, but... how, would they have last player? They must have last players though from last year. I'd imagine her. They did, they did, yeah, but they're they're well they're they're well replaced a lot. They would have lost Kira O'Shea was her fullback last year, and Kira Phelan, um, they're both Kilkenny. Um, they still have Kate. Sorry, Kay Kenny. How? Did, yeah, Kay Kenny from Offaly is is there. Oh, yeah. She's like you know unbelievable. Abby Flynn, Waterford, De La Salle, uh, fantastic player. Mm -hmm. So like they're just intercounty talent all over. Well, you know? Yeah, uh, Elise Jemison Murphy's gone in full back for him there this year. She was she was with Dublin seniors last year. She was actually wing forward um against Dublin or, or sorry, for Dublin last year. Um and she, she a, a fantastic full back as well. Um so look, again, another another mini county team. Um yeah. any any of the any of the teams we've mentioned so far, like they're any any of the teams competing at the weekend, they'd be 
top intermediate, lower senior intercounty teams if they yeah. if they were put in the mix of it. And would know? that be seen as the stronger of the semi finals? That's that side of the draw. Uh, yeah, so uh, there's a few people going to kill me for that now, but uh, there's <laughs> there's can, I I shouldn't. Um, if you make an Ashburn semi final, you're a good team. There's no two ways about it. Um, yeah. But it would be perceived as the stronger one. Um, on the flip, if we look at the the WIT team, um, there's I don't think there's any tip on the two TU Dublin team, but I'll get to them in a second. Uh, Kira Brennan is um centre forward for WIT. She wrecked havoc against us uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, and Quiva, Quiva McCormick, yeah, Quiva McCormick, Naka Villa. She's um she actually got a bad injury last week in um against UCC. The match was abandoned after twenty minutes, but I've been. Yeah, I, I've been told she's. I've been told she's. Uh, she's recovered well and um, all all looks okay. So there's a. Uh, they'd be the two. Uh, sorry, there's there's a third. There is Alison O'Mahony, Brian Bruce. That's the third. Oh yeah. Um, she's she's on the on the WIT panel as well. And then outside of Tip, uh, the key player in our book and the one we were uh, definitely looking the hardest at would have been Keely Corbett Barry from De La Salle. Um, yeah, fantastic player. Just like an absolute weapon, um, it's, you know, it's it's so much. It's a kind of she's a kind of defender you need to you near you need to plan for. You know, it's uh, usually you're trying to plan for forwards, but uh, she's that good that you do have to plan for her as well. Um, just just flicking down through, like you know, an, another nice thing to see is there. I see there's a there's an Armagh player there on the on the WIT panel. It's just a good example of. There's going to be an Armagh player playing in a in an Ashburn semi final next week. Um, I know obviously they're they're by no means a a, a weak county, but it's great to see that mix of of Armagh down to Cork, down to Waterford, yeah, uh, all them kind of teams together. And I I, I heard her. It, I it only comes to mind because I could hear the accent. Uh, I could hear the accent the other night in the match as well. So um, but it's great. It's great to see that kind of mix of mix of players. Um. Then the, the last team that we haven't talked about in the semi-finals would be TU Dublin. So as I said, highly Dublin based. Uh, I there's at least seven of last year's Dublin panel um on the TU Dublin team. Key players for me uh would be the two up top, Roshi McCormick and Megan Megan Dowdle. Um centre back uh Neve Gannon is unbelievable. You you would have scored seen the goal she scored against Kilkenny in the all Ireland quarter final last year. Um an unbelievable talent, one of the most powerful runners of a ball in Camogie. Uh, Gabby Couch and Jody Couch are there as well. The the oh, twins, yeah. um, the t- I arguably the two hardest working players in the whole country uh, when it comes to Camogie. They're an absolute nightmare to mark. Uh, Kerry Finnegan would be a well known name as well. Um, Neve's sister Claire, uh, Christine Shanahan's a Dublin senior panel as well. Um, and then there's a couple of there's a couple of Kilkenny heads there as well. Uh, Emma Minogue from James Stevens and uh, oh god, Emma Minogue, uh, Sarah Barco from Thomastown. Uh, there you mightn't have heard of them yet, but they'll be they'll be playing big parts for Kilkenny senior teams in the near future, I'd imagine. That, that's a that's a hard one to call in as well, isn't it? That side of the draw. It it is. Um, I I I think TU Dublin style of play is very difficult to play against. We found now. Look, uh, the the approach Warford brought to us will definitely be able to match it. Um, but it they they play because they have the advantage they have is they've so many of that Dublin panel that played together mm-hmm. all year. So they kind of had a style of play nearly kind of half coming in. Um, mm-hmm. whereas most colleges are trying to come up with a style of play or a system mm, that yeah. works for them in, in two, three months. So I think that was an advantage they have, but they more than deserve a place. And I, if, if you were to put me to my collar, I'd probably would be going with TU Dublin. Um, I said it a couple of weeks ago, so I'm going to just stick with it now, whether the, the better, <laughs> the better back it up, hopefully. That's, so that's the, the Ashburn Cup, I suppose. That's the big one. Uh, um, I suppose the division one competition, but, uh, Purcell, Fodermeyer, um, any predictions there? To, could who could win them? Yeah, so look, uh, as we've seen with TU Dublin, um, they only came up last year and they're now in an Ashburn semi final. Um, so the standard here is also very very strong. Um, the four teams gone through are MTU Cork. Um, I'm just gonna try get them up because I know there's yeah. Um, that would have been previously Cork IT. 
Cork IT, sorry, yes, yeah. uh, MTU Cork, and then uh, Trinity, they're playing Trinity. So Trinity got through um, by one point, the best TUS Midlands there the other night in a, in a great game. Um, uh, Maria Teen, uh, obviously, is close to you. So she's oh, yeah. uh, she played, she was with TUS Midlands. She's doing a PhD up there. And uh, she, God, she was unbelievable. Um, yeah. She completely ran the show, but Trinity just had enough. Um they had uh, uh, Chloe Farher, Galway Intermediate. She was up top and, and wrecked havoc there when it when it mattered. And and Molly Walsh from Wine Gap, she'd uh, she'd be a play ladies football with Mullinahone. So uh, oh, yeah, to, uh, yeah she, she don't call her a tip person now or I'll be shot. But um, <laughs> she's uh, she's close enough. Um, so the two of them wrecked havoc up top for for Trinity. And our I, if she if I don't mention it, our PRO. Is in goal for Trinity as well, Claire McNamara. She's a former Limerick minor uh, goalie. So um, if I didn't mention her, I'd be, I'd be in trouble. Um, so yeah, uh, they're, they're, they're probably the surprise package of the semi-finals. But again, totally deserving, um, totally deserving of of their place. They'll be coming up against a very strong MTU Cork team. Uh, Searsha McCarthy is playing centre back from. Oh, possibly yeah. midfield. Like, I haven't seen them now, but yeah, uh, we, through, yeah. Uh, we, she was she was outrageous this year in, in the senior championship. Um, so like just the pace that she has and her her shot taking ability from distance, it's it's very it's very very hard to defend against, and especially at you know a slightly like it's not an Ashburn level. It's going to be very um, the Trinity will have to be very very wary of that as well. Uh, Hanno Leary sent Finbars, um, Orla Cahalan sent Finbars. Was, there's Eve O'Neill sent Finbars as well. <laughs> Sorry, half the team is Finbars. Um, so obviously they're Cork dominated. Um, actually, there's only two non-Cork players on the whole panel looking down through it. So um, they're they're going to be a force to be reckoned with, and probably came a bit under the radar at the start of the year. Um, we didn't realise how many Cork seniors they had um, until. Uh, they they bet Galway in the first round, so that was a surprise and uh, kind of took our attention, I suppose. Yeah, I suppose Cork. Uh, so much talent in Cork with with an underage and so strong intermediate and senior level. You know, they're just yeah. Even their second teams are so strong. To you know, our panel players are so strong. Um, yeah. and just uh, the other semi, the other semi finals then. Yeah, Carlo, Carlo against um. Carlo against uh, Galway. So Galway, um, Galway probably would have been the team that we were most wary of before it even started. Let's say we would have talked about them a bit. Um, they, uh, uh, not Stephanie, Tiffany Fitzgerald is up there from Kilkenny. So she is obviously uh, um, on the Kilkenny seniors there this year, uh, which is like, you know, a massive player to have in any college team, let alone in, in the second division. Uh, so she'd be, she'd be the key player up there. Uh, then in Carlo, um, I'll I'll talk about the management first. Is uh, Anne and Angela Downey from Kilkenny, obviously. So mm-hmm. Anne, and, like two of, two of Kilkenny's best ever players, and uh, obviously, um, a, a fantastic, a fantastic managers as well. So um, and they're they're more than proven. Um, in terms of players, I'm just going to flick over. Yeah, so. Uh, Kira Kavanaugh would be she's a uh, Carol senior. She'd be a sister of our um of our assistant chairperson, and then the probably the biggest name that they'd have is Eva Goyne from Wexford. She's uh from Ratnoon or Wexford. She'd be uh Wexford senior panel. So, um, she's still there this year. And uh, Su- Susan Daly, I suppose, Scarafagano would be another uh name to note. Yeah, yeah. Brooke, Jack, anyone traveling, I suppose, to the weekend in UCD like there's an array of talent really on display across all the divisions loads of county players there to look out for and like you said non-county players that you no doubt no doubt will be county players but uh, yeah. if you want to find the details I know you've told us fixtures and dates but I suppose if we keep an eye on the social media during the week we get all the fixtures and dates and locations for all these games and air codes and the whole lot yeah, so uh, it's it's all taking place in the UCD Sports Campus next weekend. Um, the you, the fixtures will be posted up. Uh, best accounts to follow. Well, follow all our our social media. It's at Third Level Camogie with a three, not a T H I R D. So we have the same handle for the Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And Claire McNamara will be manning them for 
for the weekend. Um, she said she'll even do it from the goal for the person. She's not saying she's a goalie there. <laughs> she, uh, yeah, no, she's insisting. Um, I was telling her she put a GoPro on, but we'll see. Uh, in fairness, uh, Balls.e have been very good with us this year as well. They, um, I've been told, are sending uh, their social media accounts. So give Balls.e a follow as well. They'll have stories up um, and they'll be posting match reports, etc. Um, then Electric Ireland, obviously, they'll be they'll be posting all the details. So the Electric Ireland um, Twitter pages, uh, they'll be the best places. Um, we'll have we'll be posting up the online tickets uh, during the week. Uh, it's just getting sorted there. It'll be on that uh, the universe system. So once they go up, uh, just have them bought when you arrive, and then we'll uh, if you can, I, th I think the price points are fifteen for. Um, 15 for an adult, fiver for a student or an OAP. Um, but if you pay, let's say if you came to the games on the Friday, we'll give you a wristband and you can come back on the Saturday and the Sunday. Um, oh, so fantastic. it's not 15, it's not 15 euro a day. Um, yeah. As you said, the games it's a festival. like... A festival. A festival. It, it is. It is, you know. It, it's, it's unreal. And what, what's so unique about it is just, just hardly, like if we look at basketball in America or we look at NFL, like they get the players from different teams and they put them together and they play a one-off match and it's this like big event, but no one really cares. Whereas we have a, we have a product here where players are coming from Armagh to play with players from Cork. We had a player from Loud playing with, we had Claude McIntyre, Sarah Delaney playing with us last year in the college, uh, Sorsha Ryan as well. Like They're on the tip senior panel and there's a player from Loud gets to play with them for the year, like, which is, which is unbelievable. Yeah. We have all these players, we have this product where these players come together and not only are they playing just they're not just playing for the sake of it, like they're dying for each other out on the pitch. Um and it's a really it's a really well respected competition in in the in the game. Like we're it's it's relatively speaking, we get our we get our weekend in the, the calendar. We're let play our games in January, which is a credit to the Camogie Association. And it's a credit to the county managers as well. They if if someone's in an Ashburn semi final, there is not issues to get players to to train with the count with their with their college teams. Um yeah. So it's it's highly respected, great players, great competition, um, and as I said, a very unique product. And anyone that gets the chance to to come along, they'd be uh, they'll they'll be in for a show. Well, Jack, you really set the scene for us there. You know, a great uh, background to the competition and to uh, to uh, the story so far, and what we can look forward to this weekend and and the players uh, on show. So. You're an absolute fountain of knowledge there on third level Camogie and you're obviously doing a great job there along with the rest of your committee. And uh, just thanks very much for coming on uh, the podcast tonight. Wonderful. I know you're very busy. I know you have a hectic week ahead of you and a hectic weekend. And just to wish uh, you and all the players and all the colleges the very best look uh, for the Electric Island uh, third level Camogie Championship weekend.